in product design, sounds can provide a really critical heuristic for helping us understand intuitively what it is that an application or a device is doing for us and, and to allow us to um, keep track with the actions of the device so that we can understand that it's responding to us in the way that we expect, right? So for example, the sounds that are related to um, sending or receiving an email or a text on your phone are designed um, in such a way that they're easily recognizable. You want them to communicate the action that they're taking uh, so that when you take that action, even in the absence of visual feedback, you get uh, an intuitive confirmation that the device is responding the way that you expect, right? Uh, the second part of the question is about the brand itself and sound can have a really critical um, either beneficial or uh, detrimental effect on the on the perception of your brand right and that can change over time so uh, a large part of it is um, you know you you attach what would otherwise be an arbitrary um, sound to your brand and people learn the character of your brand over time. And a good example of that would be uh, the Windows startup sound, uh, the Mac startup sound, um, Intel's uh, branding, where those sounds do have some intrinsic kind of emotionality. They have a little bit of an of, uh, engagement that comes from the sound itself, but over time, people have learned um, that this either portends something good or evil, right? So <laughs> the Windows sound, for example, has been used as an example of something that people learn um, to dread over time, right? Because it means either something has gone wrong or um, it's possible that, you know, you've, if you're frustrated with your computer, um, that you're going to anticipate that something might go wrong, right? And on the other hand, um, sound itself can uh, lend something intrinsic to a brand, right? So a couple of the most recognizable um, branded sounds out there are uh, the HBO sound and the NBC sound. Um, and both of those sounds are intrinsically very attractive to people. People enjoy hearing those sounds, um, and in particular the, the NBC sound, there have been many, many iterations of that and many orchestrations of that over time. And if you listen to it, um, you'll see that uh, that the NBC sound has, has really kind of morphed and shifted over the years, not just over that kind of long time scale, uh, year to year refresh of the sound, but also taking that sound and applying it to different contexts and using different instrumentation. Um, different phrasings, different timing uh, to convey the context of a situation, you know, whether it's the nightly news or the Olympics um, or a sporting event or something else, right? In the past, um, the creatives haven't really known how far they can take it, and the clients haven't really known um, how far is too far, right? So uh, they've done attribution um, research in the past for a long time, and that's very successful in saying, well, you know, do people still recognize this explicitly? Do they recognize it as your brand? Um, we've taken that attribution part um, and uh, moved it into a more sensitive context, so now we can get, you know, do they still recognize your brand, but how, how much weaker, how much stronger is that recognition on kind of a, a, a much broader, more continuous scale than just yes or no? Um, and w the, the surprising thing that's fallen out of that is uh, how far you can, you can take it, right? So we can measure um, associations with multiple attributes across multiple um, candidates for a refresh of a sonic logo. Um, and there have been a few cases in which we've found that something that feels very um, uh, like you're stretching a lot, that feels um, um, very ambitious or very risky um, to the creatives or to the client, 
um, actually isn't all that risky. And, and we've gone back with the feedback that says, you know, you haven't gone far enough away from where you were um, to achieve what you want to achieve. There's a lot further that you can go before you lose your core, you know, either attribution to the brand or um, uh, the attachment of various semantic attributes or the emotional response um, that you had uh, from your original Sonic logo. Um, so it allows you to take, um, to not just uh, um, take risks and then get feedback on it where you couldn't before. Uh, you might get, you know, before it was this, a matter of, well, I know what I like and I don't like that. Uh, so you get some very crude feedback, but you couldn't get really detailed feedback from anybody who wasn't a musician who didn't speak that language. Um, but now we can get really uh, much more detailed feedback from people um, behaviorally and understand you know, exactly how far away am I and how much further can I go. So you can not just um, take bigger risks knowing that you're gonna get solid feedback on them, um, but you can also begin to develop a feel for, um, you know, well, I thought that was a big step, um, but it turns out that that's not really a big step. So now I can start to think as a creative person, I can start to think, um, uh, about, you know, kind of mark out where my boundaries really are, how far is too far, and um, something that used to feel like it was a big stretch um, may feel like more or less of a stretch um, once you have this quantitative feedback in hand.